And welcome to this video. My name is Janis and this is part two of a video series dedicated to making sounds and music with the Vermona Performer Mark II. And part one was about basic sound design. This is going to be about advanced sound design. So if you still feel like some beginner when it comes to making sounds with a performer, you might want to check out the other video first, but of course you're warmly invited to hang out at this one and see how it goes. And this whole video series is inspired by the release of my new album Morning Cycles, which has been created entirely with sounds from the Vermona Performer in some sort of live setting. So you're warmly invited to check it out. The links are down below in the description. The advanced techniques I want to share with you in this video are FM, Sync and the Sample and Hold. LFO. Plus, I also want to speak a bit about the different play modes, because especially when you're using FM, those are really interesting. I want to start with sync and you can enable it by turning this knob to the left side. So here you can either choose normal sync, no sync or anything, so it's an off, and LFO sync, which basically means that the LFO will be at the same tempo as the LFO above, which is also interesting, but we don't need it right now. So we turn this to the left. And sync means that no matter what you do, like how you tune it, it will still be in sync with the first oscillator. So it's kind of impossible to create out of tune sounds. Right now, both oscillators receive MIDI on channel one. And I have this little sequence here that I'm going to play. And now see when I bring in the second oscillator, I can actually detune it quite drastically. But it's still in tune and now the tuning knob actually changes the timbre. And especially changing the octave gives you some interesting sounds. And while it's super great to use this as some additional layer, I also like to use it standalone because you can basically mute the first oscillator. It still works as a modulation oscillator, but you're not going to hear it. You're only going to hear oscillator two. And you can again use the high and low tuning setting because this gives you way more options for different timbres because then with this knob, you can basically scroll through all sorts of timbres while it still receives the MIDI information from the first oscillator. Really cool sound. And actually you can create this sort of movement with some LFO. If you apply some LFO to the pitch, it's on some slow sine wave setting. And now you get this sort of motion, which I find really inspiring. And you can also change the octaves of the first oscillator and see how this affects the sound. Kind of nice. Sometimes you get those super broken sounds. And there's another type of sound setting I really like. So if you open the second oscillator. Actually, this sounds so cool with the pitch modulation. And let's decrease the probability for the sequence. Now we have this kind of soundscape, but sometimes we get the pitch from the first oscillator. Kind of a sick sound, but I really like it. And if you like drone music, you can, without sending in any MIDI, just open both oscillators and use the first one for the sync and basically have some fun finding some cool timbres. You see, there's already some modulation of the filter enabled as well. You can also move this with a high-low setting. I 
also modulate this pitch with some LFO. Okay, getting a little crazy here, but it's just super fun to create those types of sounds, as you can see. Next, let's check out the FM section, and FM is really one of my favorite things to do with the performer, because it's also some sort of modulation that gives you quite experimental sounds if you want to. And it's kind of a similar principle to the sync, because you need one oscillator that basically modulates another oscillator. So in our case, we can again use oscillator 1 for modulation and oscillator 2 for the sound. And Actually, we can use the on setting, just opening the oscillators for hearing those kind of effects on the timbre. So let's move this to on and this one as well, bring it in. And now this switch needs to be on off. We don't need either VCO sync or the LFO sync, but now we need this knob. And if we turn it to the left, we apply some modulation to the pitch based on this oscillator. And now. What we do on this oscillator has some impact on the sound, so if we play with the cutoff here, we hear some changes. The resonance, the octave, the LFO was still on, but this one you can hear as well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's really experimental, but it's so great for sound diving. And if you move this knob to the other direction, you modulate the filter cutoff frequency instead of the pitch, which gives you also some kind of broken results, but they are less intense because you don't mess with the pitch. So let's actually check this out. The distortion on this machine just sounds so amazing. I'm always amazed. It's also super fun to modulate the pitch of the modulation oscillator and get this sort of effect. Actually, this way you can even get one more LFO, if you want to call it this way, for the second um, oscillator. So again, pretty amazing if you like creating different types of drones. And again, here you don't need any MIDI input if you just open the oscillators. So sometimes it can be fun to actually not have to think about sequencing and all the stuff to just open them and see where you go. Actually, I made some video about even making some techno without sending in any MIDI. I'm going to link it also here in this info box. But it also works inside a sequence because those were the more droney experimental sounds. But I absolutely love it for sequencing as well because here I'm using another play mode. I switched it to M2 which means the individual oscillators get triggered right after each other if they're on the same MIDI channel. So here you can see those three voices or oscillators are on MIDI channel 1 and if I play the sequence they get distributed throughout those three channels right after each other. And the first one I actually wanted to use as some pure modulation oscillator again because now inside the sequence you can actually create this nice FM type distortion by increasing the amount with those knobs. So this oscillator gets modulated by this one. If I increase the FM for this oscillator, this oscillator gets modulated by this one. And if you want to increase the effect, you can increase the release for the modulation oscillator. And the same here.
absolutely love this sound. And it's also fun to use the other side for the modulation, but now it's starting to get out of tune. So if you have a sequence that really depends on being in tune, this is a bit risky. I still really like the sound though, so let's check it out. Somehow this one I don't like so much, but those two sound amazing. I don't know why this one sounds so much different. Let's stick to those two. This is such a great sound again. Super mysterious. And by the way, the sequence I'm using is a sequence from my Pack Human Arpeggiator, which is a collection of 250 MIDI sequences. They are a great starting point. It also carries some human touch because I played them on my drum pad with my drumming technique. And if you're interested, you can find the link down below in the description and find out more. A super inspiring tool I want to share with you is also the Sample and Hold LFO. So that's why it says S slash H. It means Sample and Hold. And it means that it sends out random values. So while the sine wave and the square or sawtooth wave are giving you a steady pulse, this one is free. So it's great for some unpredictable modulation. And here we can use some other super useful feature of the performer, which is that you can sync the LFOs to the MIDI clock. So if you click on edit and then you go to number eight, you can enable clock sync for the LFO. So if I enable it here for the first oscillator, it means that the LFO will move inside a certain rhythmic grid receiving the clock from the syntax here. And then those kind of sections here are different subdivisions. So it could be like eighth notes, 16th notes, eighth note triplets. I always forget what is where, but I basically move this around and see where it sounds the best in terms of the rhythm it adds. And here I have some sort of drum loop that sounds like this. And it's incredibly fun with a not too tonal loop like this drum loop to modulate the pitch with the with the sample and hold LFO. Because it's a little more unpredictable compared to the more static modulation. And it's also super fun to apply this to the filter cutoff because it adds those almost glitch-like effects. Almost reminds me of some double bass patterns coming from a drumming background. The more you open the release, the more you hear this kind of glitchy stuff. And it's also super fun to use the sample and hold LFO for some random rhythmic noise layers. So if you change this oscillator to noise, you can simply open it and then increase the amount for the filter modulation. Here you actually get a stronger result if you put the keyboard tracking to zero. And it's just a great starting point for any type of composition featuring some more random based rhythmic layer. And yeah, those were the three techniques I thought of that could be interesting for you if you want to dive a little deeper into the sound design part and want to get a little lost. I think those sounds are perfect for that. And the next video is going to be about some compositional approach. In fact, the next three videos are going to be about compositional approaches and making tracks with a performer. If they are already online, the next one I'm going to link here and otherwise you will find it tomorrow. And also, once again, be warmly invited to listen to Morning Cycles. The link is down below in the description. Also on Bandcamp, you can get more songs and also use this as a way to support this channel or this video series if you feel like. Apart from that, I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel.